I recommend oral appliances quite a lot when I'm managing people with snoring and sleep apnea. In terms of your position, you know, who'd be the ideal patient for me to send you for an oral appliance? Well, it could be anyone, but I mean, the ideal patient that it seems to get the best results is someone in more in the mild to moderate range. Mm-hmm. So if their sleep apnea is not super severe, mm-hmm. um, if their weight is not greatly in the in the elevated range, mm-hmm. is, is you know helps. Yeah. And we like to kind of check them out, and if they've got good jaw movement, so someone that's got reasonable what we call mandibular protrusion, just able to bring that jaw forward mm-hmm. is, is often a good candidate. But, but often it's hard to predict. And so, mm-hmm. so, so generally, uh, most people do pretty well with them, mm-hmm. but those are the patients that you kind of feel pretty confident that they're, that they're going to get a good result. But, you know, as you know, David, there are people with severe sleep apnea. They may not be the most ideal candidate, yeah. but they can't use the CPAP machine. So... So any improvement they get with the oral appliance can be can be very important. Yeah. And what do the appliances actually look like? What type of appliances do you use? Yeah, look, there's a number of different appliances, and they do different things, but the appliances which are recommended based on validated studies are ones that bring the jaw forward. So they're called mandibular advancement splints. There's appliances that bring the tongue forward as well mm-hmm. and, and, and do other types of movements, but it's the ones that hold the jaw forward yeah. and... The ones that we use is the ones that are custom made for patients yeah. and they can be adjusted by the patient quite easily in bringing the jaw forward. Mm-hmm. And they generally have some way of advancing the lower jaw from the top jaw? Yeah, that's what, right. What, do any sort of mechanisms work better than other mechanisms? Yeah, I think they do. I mean, I think the ones that are, that are most simple for the patient to adjust mm-hmm. is, is important. And there are various other mechanisms which are just a little bit more complicated and you can't do fine adjustments on them. So there, there's, there's probably over, or it must be over 50 different yeah. appliances on the market, but yeah. there's probably two or three that, that work really well. So what's an appliance typically look like, Harry? Well, this is a typical type of appliance. We call this the dorsal. So you generally have an upper and a lower. I like this particular appliance because it's not connected at all. So there's no, there's nothing joining the top and bottom. So patients can just open and close and swallow and speak with the appliance in place. So that's what this appliance looks like. And it's always got a way of, hot, of bringing the jaw forward. So with this way, you've got a, a, a mechanism here on the side and you can put a key in the side here and you can just bring that section forward. And as that section goes forward, the lower jaw goes forward. So people will do that over a period of a month or two until they get to the right position where they're getting the best results, where they're no longer snoring and they're feeling more refreshed. And if someone's using an oral appliance for snoring or sleep apnea, what are some of the common problems they run into early on Mm -hmm. and how might you troubleshoot those? Yeah. So I reckon about 75, 80% of people don't have too many problems at all. It's just a matter of getting used to having something in the mouth. The mouth's a sensitive place, but within three or four days, most people are are used to it. But you get 20, 25% of people that will have some kind of initial side effect. So it might be that they get a bit of pressure on teeth here or there. So Mm -hmm. it's usually easy to buff a little bit of material off the appliance. Mm -hmm. Normally, we're talking about the first kind of month or so. Um, So a bit of pressure on teeth. Uh, sometimes patients wind the appliance too far forward too quickly. They might get a bit of jaw problems. Mm-hmm. And so that's usually easy to rectify by having a break from the appliance for a couple of days and just winding it back a little bit. We make sure the appliance is tight enough mm-hmm. or not too loose. So there's just little things like that but that you might uh, sort of quality control. But, yeah. but the, the aim is that once people are wearing their appliance comfortably after two or three weeks, they're normally pretty right. For the A to Z of sleeping well, head to the hub, sleephub.com.au.